Hi. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to give you a very quick demonstration of how to import data. And that's just because it's a very uh, tricky step that often stops students from getting started very quickly on their work. And so hopefully this one helps to get you going faster. So if you are having trouble, the common issue that you will see is you will be trying to like read some data in and you'll have usually the wrong file name. This is the most common issue. If you're really struggling with file names, go watch uh, the video on just file names. I'll go through a lot of the same material. But what you'll see is there is there's no file on my computer called... <laughs> That's the real pronunciation. Um, and so I get this message. There is, cannot open this file. There is no such thing. It's very judgmental, it feels like. But uh, the, the issue is usually just that you need to change your file name. You will notice though, I used a particular function. I used one called read.csv. And that's a function that you're going to see in my class a lot if you're taking my class. Um, and if you're not taking my class, you're probably going to see it a lot in R anyways, because a lot of our data is stored in CSV files just because they're very transferable. They're simple, easy to understand. They're comma separated value files. So with that, I wanted to give you a few examples of how we open up different types of data and how we can manipulate the way we import them in order to just generate them a little bit more robustly. So. With that, uh, the tabular data, so a CSV file is a, a, a rectangular data set, or it should be a rectangular data set, and so it is tabular. So let's try to demonstrate that. So I'm going to demonstrate read.csv. Now, as you get better, you will learn how to just use the function without having to go through this next process, but this process will help you understand better what R expects when you're trying to load certain files. So the uh, tool we're going to use is our Studio's import dataset function. So I'm going to go over to my environment pane. I'm going to click on import dataset. A CSV file is a base like text file. And so I'm going to click from text. Um, I'm going to navigate. This is the really handy thing. You don't have to know about how to write file paths. I'm just going to navigate to that file and I'm going to click on it. So when I do that, it pops up some information. I can change the parameters in which I want to import the data. So I could say, yeah, there is a, there is a heading or there's not a heading. So look how the preview changes at the bottom when I change that. So when I say there is a heading, it tries to interpret this missing information and this X as a header, since it doesn't know how to interpret the um, header missing information. Uh, it just puts a capital X is what that looks like. Kind of a weird way of doing it, but hey. Now, uh, if I want to have row names, which in this case, uh, the way the file was written is that it does actually have row names in the first column, even though those row names are also the values in that column. That was more my mistake. I probably should have done that differently. But I'm going to use the first column. So when I do that, you don't really see much of a preview difference. And that's because it was originally set to automatic. But if I use a number, eh, that actually still works. So uh, we're just going to use the first column. Uh, decimal place, it's expecting a period. Some parts of the world are going to use commas. Uh, the quotation mark in this file I can see is a double, uh, a quotation mark, as opposed to like an apostrophe or a single um, mark. There are no comments in this file, and so I'm just going to leave that as none. There is no missing information in this file, so I'm just going to leave it as NA, which is the default value. Finally, there's strings as factors, and so strings as factors is actually a really common error people make. And so if you're using the EduPod, they're actually using an older version of R, at least right now. We're trying to get it updated. Um, but if you're using a version of R that's before 4, by default, that is set to true. And what that does is it converts strings into factors. So if I had, like, say, these right here and it wasn't becoming my row names, this would become what we call a factor representation, which is where the data is stored as a number, um, but is then, like, interpreted to display characters. And so you, you are kind of representing 
strings of characters with numbers, and that can get really confusing down the line as you try to explore your data set. And it makes certain behavior, uh, certain like programs just function weirdly. I always set it to false. I strongly recommend that you always set it to false. I believe that it will actually produce a, um, a warning message. So it worked. If I go to environment, I can see that it worked. However, it did give me some warning messages that strings as factors is deprecated, which just means they're trying to get rid of that as they move into newer and newer versions of R. So um, what's really cool about this, this, this method is that it builds the code for us. And so if I, if I paste it over here, it makes it a little bit easier for you to see. So it created its own name for the object based on the name of the file. I'm gonna call it um, example one. And then it built the name of the file for me. And this is one of the really handy things. I told you at the beginning that the most common error people have is being unable to get the file path correctly. That's why we have a whole video just on file paths. But what I typically like to do is I want to establish the names of my files separate from actually running the code, usually because it's good to compartmentalize your code in this way. And so I'll say this is like example1.file. So this will be an object that is storing a length one character vector. That's how I would classify this. If I print it, I can just see it's the uh, value there. Uh, it does print by default, so that's technically what's happening is R is being told, hey, x1.file, and it's like, what? Uh, I don't know what you mean, I'll print it, I guess, because it's a vector and I know how to do that. That's my interpretation of R. Um, but uh, that's, that's what just happened. So it's just that series of characters. But whenever I pass those series of characters to read.csv, the first argument of read.csv is file. And that's why this all worked. Now, you didn't have to know all that, right? That's the beauty of this import, import data set tool is you really didn't have to know all that. Afterwards, it helps to clean up your code by, by reformatting it like I have, storing the name of the file in an object and then rewriting the read.csv. But that's kind of the idea is that it's a really nice tool for learning how to run code or how to write code. And so if I go check out this ex1 object and I print it, I can see there is my data. Looks great. So uh, that is a way of importing tabular data. It's the most common way, I would say. And th there are a number of other methods you could use. If I create a um, example file, so let's do 10 through one this time. And we're gonna just write a table And we're going to call it, um, we're going to call it, we're going to put it in the R directory. And we're going to call it .tsv. And so this will be test of uh, data import .tsv. And I want my separator to be a tab. So that's the symbol for a tab. When I run that line of code, so I just press control, or, um, control enter, nothing happens, but if I navigate to that section, I can see that that data is now stored. So let's try to open that file using import data set. So again, I'm gonna select a text file, that's a TSV file is separated, it's just text separated by tabs. I'm going to go click on that file, I'm going to click open. So you'll see here they've shown the justification of this text based on the presence of this tab. So that's what the symbol is, it's the tab. And it allows us to interpret this as a table. So in this case, uh, again, row names, it's being automatically detected. Here's what it looks like after it's been imported. Um, the separator is currently white space. However, I'm gonna switch it to tab. That can be valuable. Um, white space is kind of a tricky one to use. That can cause issues. Tab is a little bit easier um, and more common. So finally, that's pretty much everything I wanted to change. And yes, I have these same uh, warning messages, not 
errors, but warning messages. And they tell me the, the function that was used to do this importation. So again, I can kind of now go through and break this down. Apparently read.delim has a default parameter that interprets the separation as a tab. And if I go to the help file, and I try to learn about the separator, um, it says that if uh, the separator is white space, that is one or more spaces, tabs, new lines, or returns. So that seems to be what that's default behavior is. So that's it. Like it really helps streamline this, uh, and I think that will help you out. The last example I wanted to give you was how to just import raw lines of text. So I've used this a lot when I just wanted to quickly work with some files like sequence files, which are just kind of written as lines of text. Um, and I wanted to quickly manipulate them, but it can be all sorts of things, just unformatted tabular data um, or just raw text. Like you wanted to import an entire book, you could and do an analysis on it. Um, so if I want to use that, the command is read capital L lines. And in this case, uh, you just give it the name of a file that you want to read. I am going to get something out of my downloads file. And so the question is, how do I write that file path? So I could sit here and I could show you how I tab through different things. So like, I'll use dot dot to move up one directory and then go into downloads. Oop, went too far. Downloads. And then I could go into, oh, what would be a good one? Where's that ABBA? Yeah, there we are. And so if I read those lines, I can see that it had these values. So it's imported it as a vector. That's position one. That's line two, that's line three, and that's why it's got that label there as three. It's the third value. Um, so that's how you do the read lines, but what if you weren't sure of what that path was? And so for that, I recommend file.choose. It's a really easy way to quickly get the path to a file. And so that actually pops up a little uh, pop-up. Um, you'll notice it's behind my R right now, but my R is waiting for me to do something. Um, and so I had to go select that. And now I just navigate to my downloads. I don't know why it uses this really old version of Explorer, but um, you can still get through it. And so I just navigate to the same place. That actually output the name of that file into a object. And now I can use that as the contents of the file argument in read lines. And so I get the same result as before, but this time based on that interaction. And so there you go. Those are the, the, the three main kind of file types you'll be encountering. So just like raw text files in the form of, of lines of text which you can read using read capital L lines, or tabular data, often either in the form of CSV, which is most commonly read using read.csv, or TSV files, tab separated values, which you can read with uh, read.delim or read.table. And so with that, I hope that helps. Thank you and have a good day.